Apples is the most important fruit crop in New York State, and New York State is the second most important apple producing state in the United States. Over the last 40, 50 years, particularly in the last 15, New York apple growers have reinvested huge sums of money into new, modern, high-density orchards. In addition to this, they've invested in new varieties, varieties that command a higher price in the marketplace. This really began with a variety Galo, but it continued with a second important variety named Honeycrisp, which has become the highest priced variety in the marketplace. Over the years, it's been my responsibility to help fruit growers manage an important aspect in apple orchard management called crop load, meaning managing the number of fruits on the tree. This particular aspect has a large economic impact on the returns that growers get from a particular acre of apples. If they do a very good job, and every apple was perfect and they had a high yield of perfect apples, it could mean a gross income of about $15,000 per acre. Growers spend a lot of time trying to manage the crop load on the tree, primarily by the application of plant growth regulating chemicals. Unfortunately, this process is not perfect and has a considerable amount of variability built into it. Growers can either make or break their crop with this one effort. And over the years, as I've done numerous research trials on how to do this process better, I became convinced about year 2000 we needed an improved method to manage this chemical thinning process. I began working with my colleague, Dr. Alan Laxo, to try to explain this variability in thinning from the chemicals that we get year to year. And he had developed a model that's based on environmental factors, mainly temperature and sunlight, that allowed us to calculate for each day of the year how much carbohydrate or photosynthesis the trees produced. So we thought that if we could know how much carbohydrate the tree produces and know when it's not producing enough, we could predict chemical thinning. And it turned out that we were able to show by doing field studies with chemical thinning that in periods of the year, when there was too little carbohydrate produced, we also got excessive thinning. And that gave us the idea then to make this model available for fruit growers through the internet to know when they should be applying chemicals and when they should not. As that project progressed, we developed precision crop load management. And we built into that three different aspects, starting with pruning, which is an important way that we manage the number of fruits on the tree. Secondly, continuing with the chemical thinning. And thirdly, continuing with the final step, which is hand thinning to finish the job. Now, in general, pruning's done to try to manage the shape of the tree. But a new aspect of pruning is to manage the number of flower buds on that tree. So we've developed a specific stepwise protocol for fruit growers to select five representative trees in their orchard to have somebody count the number of flower buds on that tree, and then determine the number of flower buds that should remain. Now the predetermined number, which we call the target number, is a calculated number based upon the desired yield for that orchard and the desired fruit size. That is determined somewhat by experience with that orchard in the past. But in general, high density orchards can produce somewhere around 1,500 bushels to the acre, and if a grower has a desired fruit size of, let's say, 100 count fruits, it's a simple mathematical calculation then to finally come up with the number of fruits that tree should have at harvest. After we calculate the number of desired fruits on the tree, we then incorporate an insurance factor and leave additional buds as insurance buds. And the factor we usually use is 1.5 or 1.8. With that step accomplished, the fruit grower is then prepared for the second process of precision crop load management, and that begins when the trees are flowering and for the next three weeks after full bloom. We call this step precision chemical thinning. Now, one of our studies has shown that when we don't do the previous step of reducing the number of flower buds through pruning, it's very difficult to accomplish our target with chemical thinning. Now this process, precision chemical thinning, also incorporates several simple steps. The first is to have a target fruit number in mind and have also an initial flower bud number in mind. This requires 
the fruit grower to count five representative trees after pruning and know the number of flower buds on those five representative trees. Now since each flower bud has five flowers, it's simple to calculate then the potential number of fruitlets that you start with. Now our process is very, very specific and we try to help growers have confidence of when to apply chemical thinners and when not to apply. So each day when a grower is planning to put on one of these chemical sprays, he would log on to the website, click a couple of buttons, and a recommendation would then come up for him about whether he should apply a full dose that day or reduce the concentration to avoid an over thinning situation. For this second step, we use a separate model called the fruit growth rate model, which requires more effort. It requires a grower to go out and tag some spurs and then measure the diameter of the little fruitlets in each spur twice. One, exactly three days after application, and secondly, eight days after application. And with those two measurements, this can estimate how many of those little fruitlets are still growing and how many are not growing. And those that are not growing, we categorize as being ones that will fall off in about one week. Whereas those that are still growing fast, we categorize as ones that will persist and continue to grow. With this process, the grower then can have confidence that he's going to get close to the target fruit number. Now we hope to continue to improve these two models and our protocol on how to manage crop load such that we can avoid any over thinning. The protocol incorporates a third step and that is what we call precision hand thinning. If things go well for us in precision pruning and precision chemical thinning, what will be left is a relatively small job of hand thinning. If we couple that small job to the new high density orchard system, the job can be done relatively quickly with low labor costs, but relatively precisely. We would then suggest that each grower go back and count the number of fruits on five representative trees to see where they ended up at the end of the chemical thinning process. Then at the hand thinning season, which begins around mid-June and goes to mid-July, when the fruits are between 25 millimeters and up to 45 millimeters, the grower could then do this hand thinning with a motorized platform, that single process can then vastly improve the value of that crop because at harvest, all the fruits will be larger and any blemished fruits will already have been removed such that fruits that go on the bin will be near perfect. Through this process, we can then end up with a value of the crop close to $15,000 per acre. This whole concept of precision crop load management involves a substantial amount of effort by an individual fruit grower. Sometimes fruit growers have viewed this as too complex or too much work. However, through a number of extension meetings and using some leading growers, we've been able to show and help convince them that the dollars involved are so large that it justifies this more intensive effort to manage crop load in a very precise manner. And this will help the entire New York fruit industry to remain viable and profitable.